Hey everybody, in this presentation, we're gonna be looking at a few of the improvements that have been made to XGen in Maya 2016. We're gonna be using XGen to do two different types of effects, a grooming effect and a vegetation or set dressing effect. So the first thing that we wanna do is select a piece of geometry that we wanna create an XGen description on, and we're gonna be actually using the new preset workflow to speed this process up. So we'll just go to the modeling menu, jump into generate, go to the XGen library, bring this up, and if these presets look familiar, it's because they're the same presets we had with Maya Fur. So we kind of reverse engineered that old Maya for a preset, um, all, the, all the different looks that you could get with those presets into XGen descriptions. And this is really nice because it gives you a great starting off point as well as an awesome tool for learning how to put together your own descriptions. When you dig into these guys, you'll see how we've built them up and it's really gonna assist you in getting your head around the right way of building XGen descriptions. So let's just go ahead and grab one of these presets and apply it to our currently selected um, piece of geometry. I'm gonna grab, I don't know, we'll grab the lion one. That one looks pretty cool on this guy. So when we import this in, we're just gonna go with the default settings for this example. So you can see Maya's gonna go through, it's gonna create that XGen description. It's going to add to it um, everything that we need to create the look and feel of that lion, and then go ahead and generate the preview for me of what that fur is going to look like or what that, that XGen description is going to look like directly inside of Viewport 2.0. Now, obviously, I don't want to have um, fuzzy lion fur on my character's head here, so let's go ahead and delete that guy, and let's start off with another description that I actually built up on another computer and then just simply transferred over onto this computer by grabbing that presets folder. So this makes a really easy mechanism for you to share different descriptions with people. So let's go ahead and just delete this description, and we'll jump over to my folder here. It's worth mentioning that the descriptions can can work with all the different types of XGen, um, you know, ways that you've generated them. So whether they've been generated using attributes and expressions, guide-based workflows, groomable spline workflows, or archive-based. And in this example, you can see I've got an archive-based tree, and then I've got some spline-based examples here. And what we want to do is we want to use this Sven top spikes, which is going to just generate the hair um, sort of in my character's, um, you know, the middle, the middle part of his hair, the top part, the spikes of his hair. So let's just double-click on that guy. Now this one was done using guides, so we have to make a couple decisions on how we want to transfer that those guides on. We'll just go with position-based. It's going to work just fine for this example. So again, I click the import button. Maya goes through. It's going to build that XGen description for me and then automatically do the preview for me to give me an idea of what this looks like before I commit to the software renderer. So that looks pretty cool. Let's wait for a second for it to generate that XGen, all those instance primitive splines. So that's looking pretty sweet. Now there's been some other changes or modifications made to the way we can interact with these, with these guides. So let's go ahead and look at a quick example of that. I'm going to turn off the preview of those descriptions. We don't need to have that up anymore. And what we want to do is we want to go ahead and just add, uh, add some different changes to these guys. So if we right mouse click on top of this and I jump into my guide control points, I can swipe across the top of those guys, grab a few of those guys. And if I start to move these around now, you'll notice that the soft fall off correctly work. So previously in Maya, you couldn't use soft fall off. It would do something like this. It wouldn't, it wouldn't actually be able to go down the length of those control points and, and influence those. But the soft fall off key, the hot key that turned that on and off as B, now correctly works with the guides. Another thing that we've added that's, that's really pretty awesome is the ability to interact with the guides using a brush-based workflow. So we now have this new sculpt guides tool, which allows me to just get into a brush and use that brush to again start to inter inter introduce some modifications or some tweaks to that hair. So it's just another way of working with your XGen guides to ultimately drive the instant splines. If we go ahead and generate that preview one more time, you'll see that those guides are obviously going to affect the underlying instance geometry. So a couple little things there that make working with XGen much better. Keep in mind that we have threaded XGen now too, so all that guide description stuff that we're doing when we generate those previews, uh, happens much faster in 2016 than it did in previous versions of Maya. So users are going to totally love that, I'm sure. So the next thing that we want to do is just talk about doing, um, doing some set dressing. And I'm going to do this in a, in a slightly different way. We added the ability to have an actual um, ramp that modifies the length of, or the, the width of an object down the spline. So this means you can start to do some pretty interesting things. Let's go ahead and check this out. Let's go ahead and create a new description on this guy, this piece of geometry that I have selected right here. And we'll just call it, I don't know, DTO or whatever. And we'll use splines. That's great. Random across the surface. And we'll use expressions to create that. That'll, that'll work fine for this example. So it's going to come in. It's going to create, which looks like uh, just kind of like fur or hair. We'll increase the length of this up to something like, I don't know, 55. So we have, we have some, some, some thin instanced splines. I'm going to make these guys be pretty wide. And with them being wide now, what I want to do is, let's just go 0.05 on that guy. And 
I'm going to actually start to introduce a little bit of style to it. So I'm going to make these look like weird alien vegetation. You know, do something like that, kind of clamp it down, maybe go, go in here like this. Let's pull that guy up so that they don't start quite down there quite so flat and do something like, I don't know. That looks pretty cool. Maybe we'll jump into our preview here and we'll just increase the spline segments up so that it has a little bit more to draw with. Jump back to this primitives and just add a little bit of random bend kind of stuff to kind of tweak them out ever so slightly. So this little ramp widget really does open up a lot of possibilities. You want to do things like feathers or whatever, you know, having the ability to adjust the shape of that primitive spline um, down the length of it is, is actually pretty cool. So the last thing I want to talk about really quickly are improvements have been made to the, uh, to the rendering aspect. So we've got a, a couple things here that are, that are interesting. Um, and I'm using the new, the new Hypershade look dev environment to do this. So let's go ahead and just in our outliner, so let's select this piece of geometry, this description. We can graph that guy really quickly. Let's just clear this out here. And we'll graph that. So we've now got a new physical hair model. This is really great, awesome, but we can also apply Maya materials directly to these objects. So let's just jump over to our create and I'll just grab a blend and I can say assign material to my selected object in my viewport. Let's make sure we have it selected. Looks like I deselected it here. Let's grab that description and assign that guy to that. So what I want to do is I want to actually start to introduce some, some, in, some length um, coloring happening here. So what I can do is I can just jump into my create tab and if we go down here to our 2D textures. We can grab something like the ramp widget. And with that ramp widget in here, let's just grab that guy. And what we want to do is we want to pipe this into our out color. Pretty straightforward, right? And you can see that obviously that ramp widget now, if we jump into our, um, our property editor, that ramp widget's going to adjust the overall color you know, as it shoots down the length of those curves. Pretty straightforward, right? And we can introduce some noise into that guy if we wanted to, or we could we could jump down here and add some some saturation value or some U value just to, just to kind of tweak these guys out and make them look a little bit more alien-esque in their nature. Just darken that a little bit too. We'll just kind of do something like that. So anyway, just having some fun there. So the next thing that I wanted to do is make sure that this information can get passed into the renderer, right? So this is great that it's in the viewport. So we've got a couple of uh, we've got a couple of new utilities that will let you pass this information into in all the extant information into Mental Ray. So this is again something that's really pretty helpful. If you just go up here and filter this out, just type XG into that guy. Oops, let's say XG. You can see that we now have a, a few different things that we can work with with XGen. So let's if we just grab uh, grab that hair length mapping. So by taking this hair length mapping node, did I get it? Let's see here. I did. So with this hair length mapping node, what we're going to do is instead of having the V chord of, of this ramp being driven by you know, this, this placement node, because this is just a V ramp, pretty straightforward workflow inside of Maya, we just grab the out value of this. And that's going to be able to now pass this, lap, this mapping information into the renderer. So what we're seeing in our viewport now with this ramp will actually get passed on into XGen, work exactly the way you want, and obviously it will render with this Maya material on it. So once I've done something like that and I like it, the last thing that I want to do is just go up to my generate. I want to actually export this out as a preset. So we'll say export as preset. It's going to allow me to take a little snapshot of that guy. I say export, and just like that, I now have a new XGen preset inside of Maya. Of that, of that look that I've kind of developed. So these are just a few of the things that you can do that are new inside of XGen in Maya 2016. Thanks again for taking the time to check this out. I hope you guys, I hope you guys enjoy it. Cheers, everyone.